And welcome back to Comic Frontline, everybody. I am Brant Fowler, a.k.a. The Gonzo Goose, back with you for another TV Time Review. This time, it's Arrow, Season 3, Episode 1, that debuted last night. This episode is entitled The Calm. As we pick things up with this episode, um, Roy Harper is back, and he is working with Arrow. He's already in the Red Arrow outfit right at the get-go. And, uh, you know, they're teaming up, uh, all the, the whole team, uh, Arrow... Red Arrow, they don't call him that, but they just call him Roy. Uh, Diggle and Felicity all taking down the bad guys. And, uh, you know, so we dive right into action, and everything is kind of peaceful now. Even uh, Detective Lance has been promoted to captain. He's involved. Uh, Laurel, you know, is behind the scenes working her thing. She's like, you catch him, I hook him kind of thing. And um, Arrow is recognized by the police, uh, you know, for his efforts and everything. So everything is going good. Diggle, we find out that uh, Lila is pregnant, and uh, you know she's having a baby, and it's, she's nine months uh, pregnant, about to pop any time, and uh, you know, so Diggle's really happy. Uh, uh, Oliver uh, starts to realize, you know, hey, he really does have feelings for Felicity. They try to go out on a date, but everything kind of, all, all that calm that's going on, kind of breaks apart. Uh, we get uh, the new character, uh, Ray Palmer. Dr. Ray Palmer, uh, comic fans may know as uh, the Atom, um, comes into play, played by Brandon Roth. Uh, you know, of course, from Superman Returns and Chuck and various other things. And, um, you know, he's like this witty, kind of underhanded kind of character who uh, ends up going after Queen Consolidated and, uh, you know, being a, a rival. And,. Interesting thing about him, he wants to rename Starling City or redub it Star City, which of course we as comic fans know that it was supposed to be Star City. It is Star City in the comic books, um, or at least pre New Fifty Two. So, lots of interesting things going on there. But it's like stair stepping, uh, you know, things that are falling apart for Oliver. Um, another interesting thing about this season is, okay, we know Oliver is no longer on the island in the flashbacks. Now it's now he's in Hong Kong, and we're slowly learning what happened in Hong Kong, and he even references it, and we see Amanda Waller's involved, and, uh, you know, she's threatening, you know, to kill him, or, you know, whatever, if he doesn't uh, comply to what she wants, and, and stuff like that, back in the past, so we know that there is a deep, uh, you know, connection between them, we saw a little bit of that last season, um, let's see, what else happened in this episode, we had, uh, a new crime boss, come in and kind of take over and we learn that the vertigo drug is still out there and it's being uh you know altered and everything and uh you know uh arrow and his team have to deal with that and the consequences and everything so just as oliver is getting into a nice place where he feels calm uh as the episode uh, indicates and safe and secure where he can start being himself again everything left and right just starts breaking down and uh he has to once again embrace that lifestyle that he has chosen that crusade um so in that way it kind of for, for me personally in that way it was kind of a a little bit of a disappointment because it, instead of growth for the character it seemed like he regressed a little bit um it's understandable i mean thea's gone uh you know wherever um, they do reference her a couple of times throughout the episode. Um, you know, his mom's dead. He's broke. He, you know, his company's gone. Uh, so he's been through a lot. But even through all that, he had started to get back to a place where he could feel normal again. And then he was quickly reminded he, that he can't. This uh, this life that he has chosen uh, takes predominance over everything else. So I don't know. It's. I would have liked to have seen a different approach to it, maybe a little bit more growth in that in that way, but it was still interesting. Uh, because of the Flash debuting, they throw in uh, this little scene of Barry saying, I need some advice, which we saw, you know, at the beginning of the Flash premiere. Um, so, that, you know, that was fun. They re-broadcast uh, the Flash after Arrow, so it was kind of a really nice lead into that. Um, and uh, we saw, uh, we knew that Black Canary, Sarah, was uh, gone. She had left uh, with uh, the League of Assassins and everything. She comes back, and something happens. And I don't want to spoil that because it's pretty big. Um, but something happens with her towards the end of the or right at the end of the episode, um, and it's going to have implications going forward. Of course, this whole Hong Kong uh, time, we we know it's probably going to tie into the League of Assassins in some way, shape, or form. We don't. 
know we're still trying to fit all the pieces together here uh, you know there's Felicity and Oliver they start up and then things go wrong and that's left in shambles now and everything it was just kind of this whole episode was like I'm calm getting back to normal break apart so we return to the status quo by the end of the episode so that we know where we're going here Oliver is back to gotta you know see this crusade out and everybody else's life around him is changing uh, Felicity it's kind of got this thing with Ray Palmer going on now. There's, there's this little flirty uh, kind of tech geeky thing going on between the two. Uh, Diggle has a child now, so his life has changed. Uh, you know, now, um, like I said, I'm not going to give it away, but what's going on with the Lance family? There's a few things, uh, a couple things that happen with the Lance family that, you know, they're dealing with their own stuff. So Oliver's going to become, I feel like he's going to become very insulated uh, you know, very on guard and kind of like he wasn't in season one, which is kind of disappointing. So we'll just have to see where it goes and see what they have in store. I do have faith in the show creators. Um, overall, it was a really good episode. It flowed really nicely, really quickly. I was totally immersed into it. Um, you know, I started the reason my review is late because I, I was really tired last night and I started thought about watching it last night and I was like I know I really want to give this my full attention so I'll wait until uh, this morning when I woke up um, to watch it so I could get that fresh perspective and I'm kind of glad I did because I think I've, I enjoyed it a lot more than I would have um, so yeah it's you know more the same but different players and different aspects of it and everything so it looks like it's gonna excuse me shape up to be another stellar season of Arrow just I'm not sure about the direction for Oliver Queen's character from my own personal opinion but we'll see so for this episode of Arrow season 3 episode 1 the calm I am still going to give it a 4 out of 5 I thought it was a very solid uh, season opener uh, very fun um, in parts very dramatic in others uh, and you know we got to see all the players and, and seeing Roy and uh, Oliver team up and you know take out the bad guys as, as the green and red arrows uh, was phenomenal so uh, more of that and uh, you know growth for all these characters keep introducing these new characters and it's going to be another fantastic season so there you go that's going to wrap up my review of Arrow Season 3 Episode 1. Uh, hope you liked the review. Let me know how you felt about the episode in the comments below. And check out all the other reviews, all the other content that we have on Comic Frontline. Check out ComicFrontline.com, ComicRelated.com, Zone4Podcast.com, and the Frontline Gaming Zone channel uh, for all your gaming needs. All together, they are your number one source for all your comic news, reviews, podcasts, games, and so much more. And until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.